Hey everyone, this is Caitlin. And this is Lacey. And we're at the NATDA show with Tyler Bray, our guest today. Yes. Hello, Tyler. nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> for the first time. Yes, it's nice very nice to meet, to meet you. you. Well, for the first time in a few months, it's good to see you. You could just came back from the Philippines. Tell us a little bit about that. The Philippines? You want to know about the Philippines? Yeah. So, it's very humid there. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I think I've talked to you a little yeah. bit about this though, but uh, I run an entertainment company now. And uh, my brother's in the group. It's a entertainment group. We make music. We do social media. And we're pulling big numbers and have a lot of fans. So one of the videos that we captured in the mall was us going into the mall. And just thousands of people mobbing. So super fun experience. Amazing. Did a show there. Did three shows there, actually. And it's just super fun. Popularity is growing really quick there. Yes. For that side of it. Yeah. Well, not only that, but I saw your video in New York City. You had a mob there too, didn't you? Yes, yes. That was crazy. We were on top of cars. You saw that? Yeah. 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 So let's back up for a second. (laughs) Because if we've talked about Tyler a lot on our podcast, but. Oh, you have? But maybe people (laughs) don't know, like, who is this Tyler, right? So Tyler. is the Tyler Bray? Is the owner of the Trailer Parts Outlet. So he um, is the reason why we are all here doing what we do. Yes. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how you got started in the trailer industry. What did that journey look like for you? So it's definitely a long story. And Caitlin, you were part of over half of it, like <laughs> part of three quarters of the journey. And Lacey, I think you came in at about half the, yeah. half the journey, right? What year did you come in? Oh, my gosh. It was 2018. 2018. 2017. 2017. 2017. five years. So 2017 was five years ago. I was 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And you came in when I was 17, right? So I started the business when I was 14 years old. And as you know, um, Jim Bray, the owner of Texas Pride, is my stepfather. And he runs a trailer manufacturing company. And at that moment in time, he was allowing me to... You basically sell parts that he had in inventory online. And through that process, I was able to build our own entity, our own company that's completely separate from his and just basically take parts and industry, like the trailer parts industry that's so old and take it online into the new generation. I think that's what you guys are helping do is, you know, like we're podcasting right now in the trailer industry, you know, taking it to the next level. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think you've always taken it to the next level. From the very beginning, I mean, you've innovated trailer kits. Um, You were the first one to put a complete trailer kit on the market. Um, What was the original name? SWAT kit. Yeah. So that was the second name. The first name, I don't know if you know this, it was called a superset. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't know yes, that. Yes, I called it a superset. That was way pre-me. Then. It was it was pre-you, <laughs> and that's what I called it. I thought it was such a cool name. And then we changed it to the SWAT kits, which the SWAT kits st- stood for suspension, wheels, axles, tires. Mm-hmm. Yes. Nice. Yep. And then what is it now? TK Trailer Kits. That's right. And that is soon to be trademarked for all of you out there. Yes, so, yes, yes. Uh, make sure to get your TK Trailer Kit. So, Okay. Did you go to school? Like, what does that look like? <laughs> I got, so, I dropped out I of... I mean, 14 is yeah, pretty young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I dropped out of uh, public high school when I was in ninth grade. After ninth grade, I dropped out. Um, I skipped a few grades. I was doing really good academically, so I was able to do that and stay technically legal, not truant, and have problems with the government. Then I went back to school, in high school, to get my diploma in Dallas, and then from there, I took a little bit of a break to work on the business. Then I went to college in Boston at Babson University for Entrepreneurship. And then I got kicked out of college. <laughs> and here I am doing this. Well, I think, I think the saying goes, entrepreneurs don't make the best people to go to school. You know, they, <laughs> they know the school of hard knocks. They know how to get st- yeah. shit done, basically. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, we're allowed to curse on this podcast? Yes. <laughs> Usually we don't. Very, <laughs> very innocent cursing, okay? Innocent cursing. <laughs> yeah. Not the F word. Not the um, F word, but the S word is fine. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that made more sense than stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but, I mean, you took action your whole life, and so from... You know, at least five years ago, yeah. you've grown this business 5X. Um, what what qualities took part in that growth? Like, how did you get it there? So, we went through a lot of transitional process, as you know. 
And I think the most important thing that I had learned was to let go and trust. Mm -hmm. Like, let go and trust you to run my company. Let go and trust you to run my sales division and e-commerce and all of that. But in five years, five years ago was 2017. In 2017, we were a team of only three, four mm -hmm. people. And now we're a team of close to 30 people. Right. And so in order for us to get to the point where we are today, I think the most important quality to have is the ability to communicate, mm -hmm. honestly, and the ability to trust the people around you to be creative, to have the freedom mm -hmm. to do what they know how to do. Right. And I think that's the most important thing is just as a business owner, um, your business is your baby and letting you know someone else take care of your baby and help provide their own input and provide their own skill set to make that baby grow into a wonderful adult. Because let's face it, you don't have any more than 24 hours in a day yourself. Right. So how are you going to yeah. do all the things? But it's also liberating. I'm yeah. able to do other things mm -hmm. alongside allowing y'all to take care and do what you guys are passionate about. I'm able to do the things that I'm also passionate about in addition to trailer parts. And in an, or in an ordinary um, industry or not even industry, but in a company, five years is a really short amount of time, right? So a lot of things have happened in five years time that usually would happen over a span of 10 to 15 years in yes. a company. We practically doubled so every year. What What is it, would you say, would be your best lesson that you learned from the struggles we faced, right? It's great to grow that fast. What is the struggle that we had and what did we learn from that? I think the most important thing that I learned was that I have strengths and I have weaknesses. For example, Lacey, you're amazing at structure yeah. and getting like, getting shit done <laughs> in a way that's orderly and understandable. Whereas I don't have that skill set. And Caitlin, you're good at grounding me when I have a million ideas. You're like, okay, let's do this, let's do this. And it's part of that, okay, getting the right people around you that help you achieve your goals mm -hmm. and can complement the weaknesses that you have, right. right? So I think that is where I was able to be successful is trusting the people around me to get me to that point instead of just relying on myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, over the past year or so, I mean, I think it's more important now than ever to continue to stay innovative, too. Right. I mean, one of your biggest qualities you brought to the table is ideas and that we always called you the Tyler Tornado. Yes. And as, as crazy as it was, I mean, we've implemented things that no one else has thought about because it was a brainchild at 2 a.m. for you, you know. Right. And, and that's what keeps me, me, business moving forward and, and keeps making those strides kind of like the podcast, you know. It was one simple word that was implemented and is now this big thing that everyone's inspired for. So. Yeah, and I think that's a testament to where the trailer industry is going as well, because if you think about it, you know, ask yourself, what is the average age of the standard trailer person, mm -hmm. right? And the standard, the average age in our company, I think is like under 30, yes. right? And so I think that is really, really awesome that we're diversifying our talent Therefore, we're coming up with new ideas mm -hmm. that the trailer industry hasn't ever seen before. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's, to answer your question, to add on to that, by doing more and innovating, I think that's what we bring to the table. We're bringing things to the trailer industry that nobody has ever seen right. before. I think this is one of the first, if not the first, trailer podcast. Yes. Yes. And those are the new things that I think drives our company to continually do better. Mm -hmm product offerings, convenience, our websites, our UX design, the way that we run our business, customer service, how mm -hmm. we train our people, how we manage, how we structure, all of that I think is what makes our business so valuable to our consumers. Mm -hmm. They see that we're doing all these things, they see that we're innovating, they see that we're different. And I think it's super important too to keep an open mind about, okay, this is how the industry has always done it. It's okay to take a chance, think outside of the box, and actually structure something that can go after achieving that because we have had wonderful response to that. I mean, Inc. 5000, five years running. I mean, right. come on, we're growing yeah, like crazy. Like, thing. it's been awesome success that we've seen from that. And that's just by offering something that is the same product, but structured a little bit different and handed to the customer in a different way. Yeah, I so. agree with you. And I think that, you know, the, all those accolades are amazing, but I think the ones that I'm most proud of is I think we got great places to work two years in a row yeah. now, right? Yes. And yes. so I think that treating your people right mm -hmm. will therefore help your people treat your customers right. Yes. And I think that's very important as the people. Yeah, and not only that, and on the uh, people aspect, you know, I was very fortunate. You gave me the freedom to, you know, be creative, do these events. And um, this event has made me realize how important creativity is. Um, because as you're talking to these people, you get new ideas, you're, you look forward to next year, and 
you know, as we as we grow, I just want to deliver that to the employees as well because we didn't, I'm going to say, grow up with that structure right. and that framework, and that's how what made us prosper. But now we have all these employees. We have 25 now, and so we're giving them all this structure. And so is that how they thrive, though? Yeah. You know, is that are they going to have the freedom to create and everything? So I definitely want to look forward to you know, giving them that freedom to be creative. You know, what are their thoughts? Um, what is their perspective on sales? You know, they know best. They're the ones in the field doing the sales work. So um, I'm really excited to see where we can take our people over the next year or so yeah. and see where we go from there. Yeah, I would say that's what makes us so interesting to people is the fact that we're bringing these brand new things into the industry, right? These new ideas that have never been implemented in the trailer industry mm -hmm. before. And... In the best way, I would say that I think what makes us different is that we, the saying, don't fix it if it's not broken, mm -hmm. well, we're going to continually try to make it better, right? And I think that for those of us and for those in the industry who want to keep things the same, those people are going, to, it's going to catch up to them. And unless everybody understands that we need to push and move the industry forward together right. to benefit our end users, our customers, yeah. the people who are buying the trailers, the people who are stuck on the side of the road because an axle breaks down. Right. Absolutely. We need to take care of those people. And if we don't, we'll fail. Yeah. And I think we've also like we've we've dabbled in like trying to innovate in a way that is a new look, new experience, new things. And we've definitely seen kind of restrictions to that too, because you also have to know your audience. So there's some of those things that work for other companies, like a media company that may not work for us. We've tried and, you know, but learning those things is just a great way because we've made it better, but it may still be within the framework of what our customer base wants to see and what they respond to. And, you know, honestly, it's scary, yeah. right? Because you know, everybody sees the successes, but not everybody sees the failures. Right. And every single idea is not going to work. No. And I've had a million ideas, as you know, and probably the majority of them either were not going to work or did not work. And yeah. the ones that do work are amazing. That's yeah. how you found the diamond in the roof, right? Right, <laughs> you gotta, right, you exactly. You sort through all of them to get that good one that you came up with. Right. That's but great. it's women in the trailer industry. So um, I'm going to have to ask you, oh, how, how, how does... Uh, <laughs> How do you feel like the trailer parts outlet treats women in the trailer industry? How, how, well, have, we, how have we treated y'all? So I've obviously been here for five years. And so over my tenure, um, you, Tyler, have always been very courteous and saying, what do you want? You know, what, what does your growth plan look like? What, what, do you, what is your dream job? And, you know, as I moved into motherhood, of course, I was like, I need something not as much stress, right? I can't take it home every night. I do want to focus on my family, but you still made me president of your company, right? So I don't really know how those go hand in hand, but um, I think it's we're so making unique. it work. Yes. Yeah, it is unique. So I'm so happy to have, you know, that opportunity, but also, you know, the maternity leave benefits that we have, um, the health benefits that we have, and just the flexibility that we have to be able to take care of what we need to and take care of our families, but still be able to get the job done. And I think that comes with the general understanding too, like we're gonna work our ass off. Mm -hmm. If we can't do it during the day, we're gonna work on it at after hours. And then, but it lets that creativity flow and lets you have that freedom that you need for your family, which is what most of us work for, right? To support them. Um, and our passion, right? So, And I think for not me, just for women, but for every employee of our company, you've set up our framework to start out with that gave kind of a little bit of freedom. Like, yes, you're expected to get your job done, but if your kids get sick and let's say you're the dad and have to go get them, you can do that. You're not going to get fired for doing that. And, and it's a wonderful thing of people don't take advantage of it if they feel like they're treated right and fairly. And so I think it's one, I think our, our interview together, uh, you literally asked me like, so what does this look like for you? Do you want to come in a few days? Do you want to work from home a few days? And I was like, right, I forgot yeah, about that. This is magic right here. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, because I did have a young kid at home and it was my first and trying to figure that out. And I did want to achieve and pursue 
growing and elevating myself, but I knew that I had to do it in steps, and right? So now I had I stepped it up to naturally moving into a full-time position where I'm VP of Sales and Operations. Right. Or, or That's so revenue, crazy. I forgot about that. You when... gave me that opportunity to start out with, and I was like, mind blown. Like, this is great. <laughs> like, you did just give birth. Yeah. I remember you came into the interview, and you just said, I you just... You gave birth. <laughs> came right from the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember that. Basically. I actually remember that interview. Yes. I, and yeah, and you were just talking about how you needed to, you couldn't be in every day because, you yes. know, you were still, I still remember, like, I don't know if this is TMI for the podcast, but <laughs> when you were coming Never. in, you still had to, you were, you were breastfeeding yes. and you were still going through all those yes. things involved in motherhood. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. and you were open to it. And I was like, this is wonderful because yeah. you did, you realize that people can have skills and they can apply that skill and get the job done for your company. But they don't have to be within the structure of like, no, I need you presently here for this amount of time. Like, and so it was just wonderful to know that, okay, if I get the job done, then then I can do this in my own way. So as I think that's the new generation and the new age and what's going to be successful is, especially with the virtual world, yep. as long as you get the job done, yep. as long as you get the results and even over exceed in results, I don't care how it gets done. Right. I don't care if you're working from home. You know, as you long as you get it done. You still have timelines. You still have things you have to hit. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to change. But you can do it in a different way. Right. Well, that was my only question. Yeah. And you guys answered that amazingly. Yes. So. <laughs> cool. And we were actually just having that conversation. Yeah. Her daughter's just turned five the yeah. other day. And so she's been here for five years. Five years. And yeah. so it's like, wow. And time flies so fast. Like, I don't even remember that. I'm like... You had a child, like I feel that like was there has small? been legitimately probably ten babies in my office. Yeah, yes. well, we didn't even tell that story. So <laughs> you know, three of us were pregnant at the trailer parts at outlet. the same time. At the same time, we yes. all had our babies eight day apart. Yeah, and you know, a month later, we all had our babies in our office <laughs> with us. Doing our job, changing diapers, breastfeeding for those who did that. Yes. You know, all the things, screaming babies. Tyler would come in, hold the babies, you know. Yeah. And it, it's just a very oh, interesting memory because there's not a place that, out there like that. Yeah. We have pictures of babies in the master yes. plan room while yes. we're packing stuff. And, you and know, obviously it can't be a long-term thing, right? You can't have toddlers running yeah. around. But the... the Because they scream, uh, apparently. Yes. Yes. But I do remember us <laughs> yes. talking about almost even coming out with the business plan to have a TK yeah. daycare. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Well, and, and that's just a true testament to you, like what you want to do for your employees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that Absolutely. is an idea that we never went on. Yeah. But... Um, <laughs> You know, it's almost needed sometimes. Kids get sick. I know if I'm going home to work, I'll work when my husband gets home because yes. one's trying to take a nap, the other one's pissed. Like, mm -hmm. um, there's no work going no. on, so I'm like, I'll see y'all at five. For real, though, I think we have a lot of small children, and I think that from internally speaking, if you guys all pulled however much that you guys paid in daycare money, we can hire someone full time <laughs> and like maybe even rent out a specific spot and it yes. still save everybody money. That's something yeah. for y'all to think about yeah, for real. My mom may be mad at you though that, because that's her job. That's so. right. Well, if that's her job, then maybe she, she can, can come there and do it. Do it, yeah. <laughs> she'll be mad at you because she has, has to, to do it for <laughs> 10 kids. Yeah. She was a teacher her whole life. She right. doesn't want to do it anymore, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, no, overall, it's really been a great place to work. Um, and I want to extend that to all of our yes. future employees, too, and not lose sight of that. I think that's what made our company great to begin with, and I want to continue to make it great. Mm -hmm. And it is hard to get lost in the structure and, you know, trying to make a business work in certain ways. But you got to remember the people aspect of it, too. So um, another podcaster the other day or this morning said, you know, it's a mutual relationship between the employee and the employer. And you, you lose sight after that, after you're trying to achieve these goals and yes. hit these metrics. But, you know, if y'all can be creative together, like the results that you can create from that. So. The way that I see it, you spend, I read an article and you actually spend more time working, generally speaking, than you do in anywhere else in your life except for sleep. Because yeah. think about it, nine to five, that's eight hours. And you have five to what, 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. five hours to eat dinner and spend time with your family. You spend more time at work. Yeah. So why make it a place that's not enjoyable? That's right. Make it a place that's super amazing, mm -hmm. some, a place that you can look forward to. Yes. And I think the reason why I've made the company that way is because work was and still is my life. I was 14 when I started. And you guys are basically family to me, yeah. right? I go and that's my social life and that's my life. And so why would I make it unenjoyable for myself? I wanted to make it really, really just fun and enjoyable place for everyone. And I think it yeah. still needs to be that way. And I think that's how every company should be. 
And we like to work with companies who also have that same mindset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now that you're in the entertainment aspect of it, what things have you learned that you can bring to oh my trailer world? And There's managing so much. your own, you That's know, right. a lot of the time you've managed me and then I've helped manage other people, but now you're ma managing a group of what, like eight? <laughs> How many is there? It's, it's uh, right now in our house. Nick is right there. Um, we have 12 people wow. living in one house. And uh, it's funny that we have these conversations about entertainment, but also at the same time, you work with stocks and like crypto and investments, yeah. and then you have your own company on mm -hmm. the side, which I absolutely love about our company is the fact that everybody's diversified mm -hmm. and we're able to take the skills that we learn from other places into what we have. And I know there have been so many conversations that I've had with you, Caitlin, where it's like, oh, this is something I figured out, even if it's yeah. not social media, but in, in management. But a lot of what I feel like I've learned is for one, the different types of people um, and even though I consider y'all family, I have not lived with y'all yeah. and worked with y'all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And that's a deeper connection that I have there. And it helps me understand um, work-life balance a little bit more, communication sets and boundaries a little bit more. One of the things that yeah. Caitlin always makes fun of me about is I have like, I have no sense of what boundaries are. <laughs> yeah. And so I just, I'm very just, let's get the job done. I need to do whatever it takes. And it's like just learning all of that, but also the social media aspects of yeah. things. My, um, the group that I'm running has over 55 million followers across wow. platform. Everywhere we go, every show that we go, we have thousands of people come. My own social media right now, I think I'm about to hit 100,000 on Instagram. I have a few hundred thousand on TikTok. So just learning how to cultivate, create content and market in that sense is very, very helpful. And so I think that I could bring that to what we have going on right now. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't see how y'all don't kill each other, but yes. that's another we story do. for we another do. day. <laughs> um, well, um, that is closing up the end of our session here. Uh, Tyler, thank you for joining us today on Women in the uh, Trailer Industry. It's been great. We've been waiting yes. on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot more stories to tell, but it'll have to wait for a later time. So thanks again, and we hope y'all enjoyed the podcast. You guys did a great job. You guys.